Hey folk, here's a mini episode with the meat maker at the clay range. Can a red dot sight help me knock more stuff out of the sky? Let's go find out. Inspired by aging eyes and long curiosity around a red dot for a shotgun used both on big game and birds, the meat maker is my 2023 hunting project, a browning synergy set up with a Trigicon SRO. I attached the sight by milling a slot in the gun's rib to take a custom mounting plate I had made, and I upgraded my stock to have a slightly raised cheek piece to accommodate its incremental height. Now ready for the process of discovery, I was really excited to start to think about what it meant to be able to see underneath that dot and the implications of its forgiving parallax-free nature. Setup went super quick with tight chokes on the pattern board at 20 meters to align point of impact with point of aim, and I chose to make impact just a hair low as I often miss clays just above. Now onto the clay range crucible. Worst idea in the history of wing shooting or game-changing clay grinding enhancement? Let's go find out. I wanted to try that for a really long time, but I've always been a little bit afraid. Uh, you know, machining and drilling and tapping, the expense of over-under. It's always kept me from, from trying out the concept of a red dot on an over-under, but man, am I ever glad I did. Uh, that's one of the most interesting experiences I've had with my shotgun in a super long time. Uh, red dot it's helping me see the clay better it's helping me find the line of that bird better um, I'm not covering up the bird as much on rising birds or uh, incoming driven bird kind of scenarios I can actually see with the gun in front uh, my eyes are still able to focus on the front edge of that target and find his line which is something that's kind of mind-blowing for me so while it's not a setup that I've ever seen on a clay target gun before I actually think it's gonna work pretty good for me. And to tell you the truth, I'm kind of excited to try it on birds. A couple of weeks later, the planets aligned. Where among the lichen covered hoodoos created as ice melted to usher in the Anthropocene, I was lucky for a great opportunity to try the meat maker on a partridge hunt for Chuckar. A fantastic bird to both hunt and eat they were introduced from their native Eurasia to North America way back in the late 1800s. And while there are still a few wild populations surviving in pockets of North American rocky scrub, most of the chuckar around these parts are raised and then released as game birds. They run quite quickly, can hop surprising heights, and their very distinctive markings make for deceptively effective camouflage. When they decide to hunker down, they'll often hold tight and motionless, even when they're almost underfoot, so they can be really hard to find. Fortunately, we live with a super effective secret weapon, our bird-crazy American sporting black Labrador named India. Good girl. Although she's now a granny dog who's slowed down quite a bit, this is immensely offset by her deep experience with pheasants, grouse, geese, little ducks, big ducks, you name it, this dog is good at hunting everything. And on top of all that, she's smart enough to know that there are some things she finds that you just don't mess with. There are literally thousands of miles under her paws to practice finding and retrieving that foam grouse she loves so much, but nothing lifts her up as much as the car door opening and knowing today, the feathers are real.
She lets me know she's getting tired by looking back to see if I want her to retrieve. And even though we go get it together, I make sure to respect her job and let her be the bird dog. I think she appreciates our end of the day trophy shot, as she often preens a couple of her birds before striking up that classic pose. I finished off our meat maker trial by letting her spend another half an hour with her birds, then packed everything up and headed back to the kitchen. Breasting out and cleaning our chucker was really simple and went pretty fast, but not fast enough to avoid having to settle the kitten tax, which we pay for with meat from the chucker's stout little legs. It's amazing to see how powerfully they enjoy that bird meat, and it leaves me with some appreciation around the specialness of their wild spirits. Our preparation this evening is a simple breading, then frying with a bit of olive oil. They cook quickly, and the first taste always goes to India. The rest made chukar chicken sliders for the whole family, and they disappeared like there was no tomorrow. With a warm meal down the hatch and a rich day now behind, I lifted the bird dog into bed and she quickly settled in. I imagined that as she drifted off, her mind was filled with memories of an epic chucker hunt that I feel pretty lucky we got to share. And I'm also pretty excited about the first trial of the meme maker. As the snow starts to let up, I'll continue to explore the concept now with buckshot and slugs. I'm going to try to find a way to bring along the camera as I get a really big kick from sharing and really appreciate your interest. Thanks so much for watching and until next time, take care.